Welcome to Huts of New Zealand. In this series I will travel to backcountry huts all around New Zealand to record, review and rate my experiences to give you a better idea of what to expect when you go hiking around our beautiful country. Today I'm tramping to Central Firinaki Hut, a 25 bunk serviced hut within Firinaki Te Pua Atane Conservation Park in the North Island of New Zealand. From State Highway 38, turn south onto Minganui Road and continue for 10 minutes past Minganui Settlement, turning right onto River Road. Veer left after the bridge and continue along the gravel road for another 10 minutes. The road was in poor condition and full of big potholes when I drove it, so I'd recommend driving slowly and carefully to reach the car park. The large car park lies sheltered under some spectacular old native trees, offering a taste of what's to come within the huge Podocarp forest. There's a toilet nearby, a couple of picnic tables and a small structure inviting you to the start of the main track. Here you'll find loads of information about the tracks, forests and conservation efforts within the Furunaki Forest Park. I always take a photo of the signs so I can take the information with me into the bush. Remember to take all your valuables with you and lock your vehicle before starting off on the track. The track to Central Furunaki Hut is long and relatively flat at about 17 kilometres with only 400 metres of climb. It took me just over 4 hours to complete at a quick pace with a few small breaks. The track is wide, well formed and in excellent condition all the way to the hut. It's extremely easy to walk and suitable for anyone with practically no steep, rocky or muddy sections. About 1km in you'll reach Te Whaiti Nui Atoi Canyon, an ancient ignimbrite carved out by the Furunaki River with steep sides and interesting moss covered rock formations rising above the rushing water. Here starts the Furunaki Waterfall Loop Track, a great day walk which follows the river upstream on one side and returns on the other side, taking about 3 hours. As you continue towards the hut, you'll pass the junction for the Morangi Mountain Bike Track and the Mangamate Track before reaching the loop track once again. A quick diversion will take you to the 8 metre Furunaki Waterfall, where there's a lookout bridge, a picnic table and a toilet. About halfway to the hut you'll reach Vern's Camp, an old track cutters campsite which is a great place to stop for lunch. The picnic shelter has two bunks, a fireplace, a water tank and a long drop toilet. The track continues to wind its way up the side of the river, passing over a few small streams, across pumice cliff faces and even through a small unexpected tunnel. And after just over four hours I emerged onto a large clearing and finally arrived at Central Firinaki Hut. The original Central Firinaki Hut was likely an old 6 bunk SF70 hut built by the New Zealand Forestry Service in the 1960s. In the 1990s Doc removed the old hut and built the new much bigger hut on the same site. It has since been maintained and extended to accommodate more people. Today the Central Firinaki Hut is the largest and most popular hut in the forest park. It has 25 bunks split between two rooms with 11 bunks each and an extra 3 mattresses on the benches surrounding the large table. There's also lots of bench space, two kitchen sinks, a wood stove, drying lines, roof skylights, smoke alarms, shelves, candle holders and three doors to get in and out. Outside there's a large covered veranda with jacket hooks and seating, a small woodshed, an outdoor fireplace, a warden's quarters and two nifty composting toilets. As always remember to bring toilet paper. There's also a roof filled water tank with a bench and a sink under the veranda but you could also fill up from the Furunaki River nearby. Either way, it's advised you boil or filter water before use. The big clearing out front stretches over to the river and there's loads of space to enjoy. Next to the river, you'll find an information sign about the endangered fior or blue ducks in the area. With only about 1200 breeding pairs remaining, these ducks are one of the rarest species in New Zealand, but if you keep an eye out along the rivers within the forest park, you'll eventually have a very special encounter. Doc and the local iwi run trap lines all through the forest to target pests like stoats, rats and possums which all have negative effects on the field as well as other native bird and plant species. There were a few other trampers and hunters in the hut when I stayed in October and it's always great to meet new people and share interesting stories. After it got dark I prepared my backcountry cuisine and joined some others out by the campfire under the stars. The forest is home to many nocturnal species, including the 2021 Bird of the Year winner, the native long-tailed bat, or Pekka Pekka. You'll even find glowworms along the banks behind the hut and by the toilets. After a long day tramping into the hut, many people may be very tired, so when it comes time to go to bed, remember to be quiet and considerate of others. It also pays to bring earplugs to block out the snoring.
The morning was calm and beautiful, and the forest was brimming with birdsong. I enjoyed my morning coffee out on the veranda and took the time to appreciate the natural wonder of the peaceful forest. It has been described as a dinosaur park by botanist David Bellamy, a living cathedral that dates back 200 million years. You'll be amazed by the sheer scale of the massive podocarp trees such as Rimu, Totra, Kahakatea, Matai and Miro, some of which are a thousand years old and stand 60 metres tall. It is one of the last remnants of New Zealand's prehistoric forests and we are very fortunate it was saved from logging in the 1980s. Back at the hut I packed up my things, swept the floor and signed into the hut logbook. And after taking one last look around, I set off for the day and began tramping towards the next hut. The Faranaki Forest Park covers a large area and there are several other huts dotted around the place with decent tracks linking them all together. I did a three night trip, staying at Central Faranaki Hut, Upper Faranaki Hut and Mangamato Hut before returning to the River Road car park. Continuing south from Central Faranaki Hut, the track becomes narrower and very muddy in places. If you follow the signs to the Plateau Road End, you'll come across a swing bridge crossing the Faranaki River and a sign pointing towards a cave. You gotta check this cave out if you're brave enough. Carved out of pumice deposits, it is really awesome and extends way deeper than you might think. Just watch out for creepy crawlies like the giant Weta. There used to be a small four bunk hut here in the 1980s, fittingly called Caves Inn, and it was used as a base for track cutters. Overall, Central Faranaki Hut is an incredible destination within one of the most spectacular forest parks in New Zealand. It may be a long walk, but there's so much to see along the way, and the large hut has everything it needs to make you comfortable. I'd give Central Faranaki Hut 5 stars. It's functional, spacious and popular, serving as the gateway to all the Faranaki Forest Park has to offer. It's a serviced hut, but no bookings are required, so it's first in, first served all year round. Check out the DOC website in the description below for all the information on tracks, prices and how to pay. There's no cell phone reception at the hut, but there is at the car park just in case you need to arrange transport. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of the huts of New Zealand. There's a butterfly up here.